back in. See, it's like we're starting to become old friends again. You know what I mean? Right? Right, Gordon? No, what? Yeah. Anyway, this is for the uh, September 3rd fight between Dayan Zavetz and Andre Berto. I hope that's the right pronunciation of his name. You know, just saying. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, is I'll break both fighters down and then I'll give my prediction. I'll start out with uh, Dayan Zavetz, who's 31-1 and one, with 18 knockouts. And some might say, hey, that's not a big you know, knockout ratio, but... Four of his last five fights, he's had knockouts in. What was it, four of his last five? Anyway. But looking at that, two of those were um, in the 12th round knockouts. So, you got to be excited about how he carries his power late. Now, the Paul Delgado fight, that was, uh, that was an okay win. It wasn't a good win. It was an okay win. Because Delgado is like 180th in the world or something like that. Now, uh, Joel Mayo... Well, it was a good win. But when you look at the quality of opposition that he's been in against, they haven't been exactly world beaters in there. And that, that kind of has you, you know, worrying about it. Now, he's a tough-looking son of a bitch. <laughs> he's, he, he, he's hardcore, man. He's like one of those, like, no-neck dudes that you see on the street. And you're like, damn, I don't really want to mess with him. You know, this all the time. Anyway, he's... Got a very tight D, and I love his D, but the one thing I don't like is that when he is covering up and he moves back, he doesn't throw punches off of it. Okay? And if you throw a lot of punches on him, he'll, he just kind of shells up and he moves, he moves back. He doesn't really throw a lot of punches off of it. And he can get hit like that. Now, he is aggressive. He throws a lot of nice one-twos, a lot of good combos. And there he does work the body, and he's got a very nice, powerful jab when you see him pumping those in, in at people. He's, he, it's an aggressive, aggressive style of fighting. He's got okay speed. I Personally, I think my hands are faster than his. <laughs> I'm a heavyweight. Anyway, he's got okay hand speed. And I think that's going to pose him some problems against the uh, uh, boxers, like legit boxers, when you see him out there. He's got a good chin. He's got great stamina. So those aren't um, going to be a worry worry in there. He tends to get wide though when he throws his right hands. If you ever watch him throw right, uh, his right hands and stuff, he tends to loop them out when he throws them as opposed to firing them straight. So it takes longer to get to there than there. You see what I'm saying? You see that? You see the little thing? Yeah, okay. So, and, and with that, when he gets wide, those are the times where he can be countered. It's not so much that, you know, he's leaving himself freakishly open and stuff like that. His hand speed is what will set him up and be his undoing and stuff like that if it happens when people are throwing punches at him. He can be almost timed because his hand speed is not that fast. Um, that's, that's pretty much it on him. You know, going over to Andre Berto, who's 27-1 with 21 knockouts, um, he is, the southpaw, he's coming off an absolute... Um, He's not a southpaw. I don't know why I said that. Uh, he's coming off an absolute war. A war with Ortiz. And while he came out and he lost that war with Ortiz, and Ortiz is the best opponent he's been in against, you have to wonder how much damage was done in that. Because it was a war. It wasn't just a fight. It was a legitimate war. And... Rarely do you see fighters come out of those like normal. Cotto Margarito was a war for Cotto, okay? And that changed him. He wasn't really the same guy after that. Arturo Gotti, Mickey Ward, those were wars. It changes you physically. Something happens there. Is that going to affect him here? Is he still going to have his freakishly... He, he is very, very fast. Is he still going to carry that? You know... We know he has to have a good chin because he was, it seemed like he was getting hit with bombs every time he looked when he was in the Ortiz fight. He went down a couple times. You know, some didn't even get counted. You know, the actual knockdowns that he was down. But he still got up. He was still able to kind of shake him off and continue. And Zavek does not have that kind of power. Um... His D is average because he relies on his natural abilities more than actual defense. 
And he gets thrown off his game plan, and I will say this will hurt him if he does it again. I mentioned it in the Ortiz video that I did. If he sticks to his game plan and doesn't get drawn into a war, he can be deadly. He can actually box on the outside. He has a very fast jab. He has an electric right hand that can just spark out of nowhere. Ask Ortiz about that. You know, he, he's very good with the hooks, works the body well. There's amazing fast combos. The kid can do a lot of stuff. And he can tend to get off balance, though, when he's throwing his shots. Showed heart when in that Ortiz fight. I mean, this was the war. This was the litmus test of all his fights. He lost, but at the same time, you have to give him credit on that end. He has the stamina to take the, take the pounding. Um, works the high-low well. His chin, as I said, is okay. And the biggest thing is, is did he learn from this loss? Will he learn to stick to his game plan? Will he learn that his best bet is to stay outside? He's, he's good at fighting inside. I'm not saying that. He's good at even when it comes to warring. But that's not his game. His game is to stay that half-step back more. And this is inside and warring. This is that mid-range where you can box, get your power shots in, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm just keep you at the edge of the jab all day long. Okay? So, has he learned from the Ortiz fight? And that's the biggest thing I think we're going to look for in this, is did he learn? If he did, then the prediction is going to go, John Zavek took, took a pretty nasty beating in the, in the fight. If he didn't, it's going to be a close fight, and I still say it goes to Berto in it. So, ultimately, I have Andre Berto winning this fight. I think he will learn from the Ortiz fight, and he's young enough that this war won't be his undoing. But, you know, one or two more of those down the line, and it's going to be an early retirement kind of thing. So, he's got the guts, he's got the will, he's got the ability. I think uh, Berto is going to pull this one out, and he'll be the IBF champion. And uh, I might even go as far to say they'll stop the fight because Zvek will have taken too many shots. I'm go with the 10th round. Okay? Well, hey, it's a big ragu. It's my prediction. You can feel free to comment, rate, subscribe if you like. Be my friend if you like it even more. All right? Well, hey, this is a big ragu. I'm out.